Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. And welcome to episode 111 or 111 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to ask at nonmonogamyhelp.com and they'll either be read in the podcast or the column anonymously. If you want to read the columns and listen to the podcast, you can find everything at nonmonogamyhelp.com. Subscribe to the newsletter by going to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. And of course, follow the column on Twitter and Instagram, which is me at nonmonogamyhelp. It's also really cool if you follow on Instagram because I do live Q&A which you heard in the last episode so that is usually where I do them or ask questions about them so do check that out if you want to become a patron and support the columns on the podcast I'd super appreciate it there is a cheaper tier which you can subscribe to if you're feeling like you want to support but you don't have a lot of means to support and you can find all of that at patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix and if you donate five dollars or more a month or whatever tier that is with your permission I'll read your name at the end of the podcast right Let's get to this week's discussion question. This is the first episode you're hearing every week before I read the letter. I put forth a discussion question you can use with your friends, partners, or anyone else to get to know them a little bit more. I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context. This week's discussion question is, how do you talk to your friends about your partner? I think this is an important question because a lot of the columns, not every column and podcast I get, but there are lots of different columns and podcasts I get where there is an issue with people talking to their metamors about their other partners. And I think that this is kind of understandable because it is quite normal and in general, I think quite good for people to talk to their friends about their partners. In fact, I think it's a little bit kind of, I don't like the word red flag, but I think it is a little bit like eh, when you have someone who doesn't like you speaking to your friends about your relationship or who tries to kind of separate you from your friends, that's always like, not the best sign. So I think that it's a really important thing actually to be able to talk to your friends about your partner. But I do think sometimes when it's within polyamory, it gets a little bit complicated. But I think it's also really important to think about how you talk to your friends about your partner and to have discussions with your partner about boundaries and privacy and things like that. But I do think like there's always situations where friends know a lot about our personal lives and there's kind of like this understanding between friends that, you know, it doesn't need to be something that they spread to other people, that it's between friends, things like that. But it's worth thinking about and I think it's definitely worth talking about to your partner because you never know what kind of boundaries people have around that and sometimes you don't know until they've been crossed. So yeah, the discussion question is, how do you talk to your friends about your partner? Let's get to this week's letter. So I have a friend with benefits. We did genuinely start out as friends and we had sex. I feel like it has been the healthiest transition I've ever had in my life. I have been diagnosed with BPD in the past year and have become very aware of my behaviors. I had time to process my feeling and we are very open with each other. Nothing really escapes us and we have great communication. This is the big issue. I'm in love with my FWB. I do not see this as the issue, but the issue is he is in a relationship. This relationship always was open sexually, but never polyamorous. I think I'm starting to feel jealous and resentful of my metamor. There is such an obvious incompatibility between them and my friend with benefits confides in me about everything. I think the reason why I feel this way is because my friends with benefits seem stuck in an unfulfilling relationship. It is so hard watching him settle. It's hard hearing him say, I think my my BF is giving up, so I'm gonna give up too. I finally had a talk with my friend with benefits and set up boundaries. He was very helpful in this matter and he stated that their relationship is not my issue and he would look out for me. I think this brought me some sort of relief because I was very involved and very concerned with them getting along. So I just decided I needed to remove myself from things I can't control. Now the resentful and jealous feelings. I am just trying to tell myself I am not manipulating my FWB. I am being supportive and speaking my mind. I've been very direct and often my FWB agrees when we talk about the incompatibility. I'm trying to not be resentful, but these feelings are starting to catch up with me. I often have intrusive thoughts like, I'm a better fit. I'm a better match. Why does he stay with someone he isn't happy with? How can he not love me back? 
I know these are normal human feelings, but I am starting to feel helpless. I'm such a romantic and I'm not one to give up easily, but I feel like he will probably never have feelings for me, even if him and his BF consented to polyamorous relationships. For now, I feel like I'm in limbo. Should I even keep going with this? Is it really worth all of my grief? I keep telling myself to be patient, but I think my patience is running out. I've almost broke down once and told him I couldn't see him anymore and that we couldn't have sex anymore, but I just ended up falling back into things again. Any kind of advice is welcome and thank you for your time. Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often in a lot of my columns and podcasts, I encourage people to seek a polyamory-friendly therapist, and for a lot of people looking locally for a therapist who may be supportive of polyamory, can be impossible or out of their budget. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of the day, and they do offer some financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code NAMINOGAMYHELP at checkout or going to betterhelp.com forward slash NAMINOGAMYHELP. Let's get to this week's answer. think you're kind of lying to yourself about multiple things here. So from your perspective, let's be real. This person is not a friends with benefits, no matter how much you call them a friends with benefits. You're not mentally thinking of this person as a friend with benefit. Friends, friend with benefit. I don't even know. The FWB. You're not thinking of that person as an FWB at all. If you're telling yourself to have patience, like that is the biggest sign that you are not seeing yourself as just a friend, whatever you want to call that, or however, however you want to define that. And I realize that some people, you know, for them, lovers and friends are all the same and whatever. Clearly this person that you are with has a clear distinction between someone who is quote unquote, just a friend and someone that they are with. And you are not the person that they are with, but you are mentally seeing yourself as potentially the person that, th that he could be with. Like you're having patience, you're holding out for something. You're not being real with yourself about that. You see yourself as eventually replacing his partner and being part or being part of his life in a way that he has kind of made clear to you in some ways, in other ways, not so much, but he has from the get said this is not going to happen. And he's not really doing you justice by allowing you to continue to pine because he must know that even though you have defined your relationship as a friend with benefit relationship, that that's clearly not how you feel. And the second thing that you're kind of lying to yourself about is that this person isn't your metamor. And I think this is, this is kind of why you're having this issue, right? You're defining this person as your metamor as if you're in a polyamorous relationship. You're not in a polyamorous relationship. You are a friend with benefits. That is it. And I think that you telling yourself like, okay, like we can be all like splitting hairs and whatever. And like maybe people who are in open relationships do call it. But, but I think that, that in this case, describing this person as your metamor is another way to kind of lie to yourself a little bit. That person is his partner. You are not his partner. And he is actively choosing to be with that person, regardless of how much he wants to whinge and bitch and piss and moan about this person. He is choosing to be with that person. He is choosing to not be with you. And I think that you need to see that. You need to see that it's not just him being this sad little victim of being in this relationship that doesn't work. This isn't about compatibility. This is about the fact that he is choosing this person and not choosing you. And I think it would help you to actually see this rather instead of him just kind of, why isn't he giving up this as him actively not choosing to be with you? And the other thing is, it's hard to kind of tell from your letter what the timeline is, because clearly you do realize you're too involved from your letter, but it doesn't really sound like you're upholding your boundaries. And to be honest with you, even if you were in a polyamorous relationship, if he was complaining to you about your actual metamor, like if you were actual metamors, I would actually still say that this is too much to put on your shoulders and that it's a not fair thing to put on your shoulders and that you need to tell him to stop. Like, even if you have to say, I don't want to hear anything about your partner. I mean, it's not a don't ask, don't tell situation, but this is where it's gotten. It's kind of gotten to the point where he's complaining to you about his other partner and that's causing feelings. And he doesn't have to complain to you about that. There are tons of other things that he could talk to you about. So I'm not sure if like you put down that boundary and it's and he's been holding to that since then, or you tried to put that boundary down and it wasn't really held down. But I feel like, it sounds like it wasn't really held down. It's hard to say, like I said, from the timeline of the letter, but 
you know, maybe you could continue to be actual friends with benefits while realizing you hold feelings or hopes, like, because sometimes that happens and that is very human and your resentfulness is very human, but you can't also do that and hear and be supportive of all of the trauma that's going on in his, and I say trauma, that's a little dramatic, of all of the other problems that's going on in his other relationships. Like, you can't do both and you need to be clearer about not being able to do both. And as I said, even if you were in a polyam relationship, I would actually say that you shouldn't do both even in that case. It needs to stop. It's just not fair. Like, it's just not fair within a polyamorous context, within an open relationship context, for someone to vent their frustrations about their other relationship to you. He has other friends, surely. He can go see a therapist. You do not need to be his therapist. And the other thing, and the last thing that I really, really want you to think about is that it's not the metamorph that's the problem. And this is something that I see happening a lot with people. When you're with somebody and there's an issue with their other relationship and it's affecting your relationship, it's very, very easy to blame the metamorph. And it's very, very easy to not focus on what the actual problem is. And the actual problem tends to be the person that you're dating. And I need you to, to really put this into context. This, this person that you're, that you're, you know, friends with benefits, quote unquote, with really put this into context. This is someone who fully realizes that you have feelings for him and chooses to put you in the middle of him and his other partner. He chooses to make this something that he shares with you and ask yourself if that's really compatibility. Are you truly compatible with a person who does this to you? If your positions were switched and you were the person he was a partner with, would you want someone who complains about you in this way and stays with you and complains about you? Would you want that? I think that you're not realizing that you're not actually that compatible because actually maybe you deserve someone who doesn't do this to you. You deserve someone who you don't have to be patient for and who doesn't turn you into their therapist and doesn't put you in the middle of their problem relationship and, and put that stress on your shoulders. There are literally billions of people on this planet who will not treat you like this. You say that you're friends with benefits, but where is the benefit and where's the friendship? Where's the friendship in this? It's, it's, it doesn't seem fair or okay that you have this person that knows, who knows how you feel, knows that you are interested in them in more than just a friends with benefits sort of way and decides actively decides you're kind of painting him in this kind of victim position. And it's easy for you to see him as that because you care about him and you want, you know, this dream romantic thing to happen where you both, you know, he finally breaks it off and you get together about whatever, but look at the situation. He knows that you are interested in him. He knows that he doesn't, for whatever reason, why this other relationship isn't working for him. He knows it. And he actively chooses, he's an adult, he's not a child, he is capable of making decisions and deciding what he wants to do with his life and his time. And what he chooses to do with his life and his time is to complain to you whilst going back to his other, his partner. That's what he chooses to do. You're compatible with that. Ask yourself, am I compatible with someone who does that to me? Really ask yourself that. Because I genuinely hope that the answer is no, you're not compatible with someone who knows. It would be one thing if he didn't know. It would be one thing if you hid it from him and you were kind of secretly pining away and, you know, but it, I don't think that's the situation here. I really don't. And honestly, even if, even if you kept it a secret from him, even if he didn't know that you were interested in him in more than just a friends with benefits sort of way, I still feel like, yeah, someone who... Would I want someone who's with me to not want to be with me and not tell me? Like, really think about that. Is that really what you want? Someone who would, who would date you and be with you, but not tell you that they're not that compatible with you. Is that, is that really what you want? I remember this one time that uh, my mom and I were listening to this song and the song said something like, if you don't love me, lie to me. And I think she said like, oh, I hope that basically she hopes that, that if someone was with her and they were in love and, but they didn't actually love her, that they would lie to her. And I remember thinking, yikes, Wazowski, I would never want that 
I would never, that's not romantic in any way, shape, or form. I don't care if I'm 85. I would much rather someone be fully and completely honest with me and say, I'm not interested in you anymore and break up with me and be alone than to have someone be with me and not only not want to be with me, but complain about me to somebody else. Complain about me. Like, think about, put yourself in the position of that other person. Stop thinking of this as like a, a like you want to take that slot. You want to take that spot of the person that he can complain. Who's to say that the same exact thing won't necessarily happen to you? And I'm not saying being paranoid is the way to go about this, but I'm just saying like, is this really what you want to be compatible with? Is this really what you want in your life? Is somebody who fully has the potential? And I know like your romantic brain is like, well, it'll be different with me because we're perfect. I very much doubt that the relationship that started in between them was any less romantic. But the kind of person who stays with someone who they don't want to be with and admits that to other people, but doesn't break it off, ask yourself if you're really compatible with that person. So yeah. To sum up, I do think there are lots of things that you're kind of lying to yourself about here. I think that you're kind of imagining yourself as a polyamorous partner, even if you're not defining yourself as that. And I think he's kind of letting you do that in a way. I think that you are way too involved, even if you were in a polyamorous relationship, you're way too involved. And the boundaries there should be clearer. But at the same time, I'm kind of hoping that you understand the problem with this entire situation. I'm not saying that you necessarily have to end it, but I do think that you need to ask yourself a few questions about, is this somebody that I want to be compatible with? Is this really a situation? Is this person even my friend? Because what kind of friend, you know, especially then, and, and, this, and this is, you know, if he knows that you really care in a more than friend way, then even more so then, if he doesn't know that, then I'll try and like, you know, fair dues to him. Maybe he doesn't know when he's just trying to like offload onto you as he would a friend, because that is quite normal. But even then, some of us have had friends who come to you. I mean, for me personally, I can't, other people, maybe they can, I can't stand it. When I have someone who comes to me and constantly whinges to me about the same damn problem, but won't do a goddamn thing to fix it. I can't stand that. That's not a friend to me. That's not even a friend. Now, I'll, I'll if you want to complain, we can complain. But if you keep coming at me and complaining about the same damn thing over and over again, I have no patience for that. That's just me. Maybe that's not you. Maybe all your friends are like that. But honestly, if you're the person that everybody comes to to cry on your on your shoulder and like you're the you're the therapy friend, you need to maybe think about that. I hope you're not the therapy friend. I hope this is just in this situation. But being the therapy friend is not always a good thing. And sometimes you got to put a little bit of your foot down and be like, look, I can't talk to you about this anymore because I'm starting to get frustrated because clearly you're in a situation that you don't like. And I'm tired of like trying to convince you to see your own worth and whatever, you know, and in this case, I don't know. But I'm saying like, even friendship wise, somebody who comes to you and is complaining again and again about the same thing, ask yourself if that's really a friend. So yeah, take a look at the situation and really think about, is this what you want out of a relationship, out of a friendship, out of anything? And just think about it for a little bit, because I think you deserve someone who doesn't leave you hanging you deserve someone who doesn't treat you like their therapist. You deserve someone who respects your time. And you deserve not to be hanging on the hook. And you are choosing to hang on the hook. And you can choose to not hang on the hook anymore. So I'm not saying you need to stop being FWBs, but I do think that you really need to look at this situation and see if there are benefits actually with this friendship. Because, okay, yeah, maybe you have nice sex and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But there, there are billions of people on the planet, okay? There are billions of people on the planet. I'm sure you will find somebody else. So just think about, think about those things. I hope that helps and good luck.
Thank you for listening to episode 111 of the Non-Monogamy Hill podcast. I can say this after 111 episodes. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to my Patreon. Donating uh, in the middle tier, tier two, I think it is, it means that your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are... Laura Boylan, Chris Albury Jones, Juke Nikki Jones, James Wartel, Leo Yaki, Tyler Tigno, and Justin Calm. And if for whatever reason you can't become a patron, because I totally get it, cost of living crisis, things are not great for everyone. If you can take five minutes, log into iTunes or Spotify, rate and review the podcast, it'd be super helpful. I noticed that there's a lot of ratings on Spotify, actually, which is amazing. I think I said this in the last podcast, but I can't remember. But I just want to say again, thank you so much for everyone that's giving me good ratings on Spotify. If you haven't given me good ratings, I don't know why you would still be listening. That's a weird choice. I think you should think about your life. But if you did, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. If you don't want to write a review and you just want to give a rating on Apple, that is super appreciated. So yeah, that's all for this week. You will get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.